All right, so now for the fun part. Um, just like the square roots uh, with radicals, you should be able to simplify. So, for example, if I had the square root of 50, well, 50 is 25 times 2, and the square root of 25 can be found. We can actually do that. So it would be 5, but we'd still be left with the square root of 2. Well, the same thing can be happen when we have other roots. So we, here we have the cubed root. And so one of the things I like to do, remember what the whole point of a cubed root is. Something times itself three times gives you that. So let's see, 54. 54 is, let's see, 9 times 6. So I'm seeing threes in there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it all the way down to the, um, to the threes. So 9 is 3 times 3, and 6 is 3 times 2. So if we look at this, we have three threes. Therefore, we can take the cubed root of this, which will just be the 3, and then we're still left with the cubed root of 2. So again, cubed root means a grouping of 3. So if we can find a group of 3, we're going to take it out. Remember, that group of 3 is 27, and the cubed root of 27 is 3. So what times itself 3 times gives you 27? 3. All right, so that's one of the things you have to be able to do. The other thing you need to be able to do is rationalize. Now you'll notice here I have the fifth root of fifth root of three fourths. Now before, if I had the square root of something on the bottom, let's say the square root of three, I would multiply by the square root of three again. That way I had two threes because remember the square root is something times itself. So then I would just have three there because the square root and the square root of three and three is three. Okay, so now if I'm looking at the fifth root, I need something times itself five times. Now, I'm going to remind you that four is two times two. So if I don't want a denominator here in the root, I need to have five twos. I only have two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by more twos. In fact, I'm going to multiply by three more twos so that I have five of them on the bottom. But if I do it on the bottom, I have to do it on the top. And so now what happens is I have a group of five twos, so I can take the fifth root of that, it's going to be two. And then on the top, I still have 24, if you multiply all that together, so I still have the fifth root of 24. And so now I'm following the rules that I don't have any roots on the bottom, so this will be okay to have. Remember, that's called rationalizing. And so now it's just a matter of practicing that. We're just going to continue this. So basically what you want to do is you want to break down that number inside down to probably primes would probably be the best. So 64 is, <clears throat> well, I could start by saying that it is 4 times 4 times 4. And I can break that down farther because each of those 4s is a 2. So I'm going to have 6 2s. Now I want the fourth root, so I need a grouping of 4 here. So now I can take that out. That'll just be a 2 on the outside. And I still have two twos left, not four of them, so they'll still have to stay. So that'll be my answer. Remember, I'm looking for groups of four on this one because of the four. Now, for this next one, I have the fourth root of seven over eight is three twos. So now I need to put another two in there to give me my fourth two, but I need to do that to the top also. So I have a grouping of four. That means the bottom is going to be two. The fourth root of those twos is two. And then on the top, I still have 7 times 2, which is 14. Okay, we're also looking at simplifying other ways. For example, if you have like radicals, so like radicals means that the number inside the divot is the same, so they're both 3s, and the number inside the radical is the same, they're both 2s, then they're the same radical, so it's like having the same variable. The number inside is the same, and the number inside the divot is the same. And if you have that, it's like adding x's. So if I was going to add these together, this would be five of them, because I have one of them here and four of them here, so I really have five of them. Okay, so it's just like working with um, variables. So that means on this next one, my 6 to the 1 fifth and 6 to the 1 fifth, they're the same thing. I have seven of them plus two of them, that makes nine of them. So it would be 9, 6 to the 1 fifth. Sometimes, though, they're not going to look the same. If you look here, yes, they both have cubed roots, but this one has a 16 and this one has a 2. 
So if that happens, we actually want to look to see, can we simplify anything? Now the cubed root of 16, I can simplify that. That's four twos. Two times two is eight times two is, sorry, two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. So I have a grouping of three here that I can take out. So now I have two cubed roots of two left. And then I still have that guy, so minus one cubed root of two. And now that they are, they are the same um, number there, and they're the same number inside the radical. Now I can actually say two times minus one is just one, so it's just going to be the cubed root of two left. So let's practice these a little bit more. Again, this is a good place to hit pause and try it yourself. Okay, so on the first one, I have four to the three-fourths and four to the three-fourths, so I can go ahead and just do the numbers inside. So I get two times four to the three-fourths. And then for the 81 um, and the 3, they're not the same, but I bet I can make them that way. 81 is four threes being multiplied. Just copying down the rest of it. There's a group of 3 there, so I can take that 3 out. And I'm left with the 3 inside still, which is good because now they match up. So I have 3 cubed roots of 3 minus 1 cubed root of 3. That gives me 2 cubed roots of 3. Okay, so on this next one, um, I have the cubed root for both of them. They both have a cubed root, and when they're multiplying, you can go ahead and combine them. So this is a cubed root of 18 times 15. Now I'm guessing that we can simplify this sum, and I'm not even going to worry about multiplying 18 and 15. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write them down into the primes. Now if you have troubles getting them in the primes, do the factor tree. So it's 18, and that'd be 9 times 2, and 9 is 3 times 3. So I can write 18 as 3 times 3 times 2. And then 15 is 3 times 5. And so now as I'm looking for um, simplifying, remember this is a cubed root. So I'm looking for groups of 3, which I have 3 threes. So I can take that out front. And then I'm still left with the 2 times 5, which is 10. And so there's my simplification. That'll be my answer. On this next one, I need three sevens because I can't have that seven in the bottom and I can't split seven up any farther. So I need two more sevens. So I'm going to multiply by sevens on top and bottom. So on top, I'll still have the cube root of one times seven times seven is 49. And on bottom, I'll have just a seven. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> So the 9 is 3 times 3. So I have the fourth root of 80 over 3 times 3. Since I'm doing the fourth root, I'm going to need a couple more 3's. So I'm going to multiply by two more 3's. And then those two 3's on top also. So then um, I'm also worried about the 80 though. 80, if I factor that out, is 8 times 10. This will be 2 times 4. This will be 2 times 5. And the 4 is 2 times 2. So remember now, I'm looking for fourth roots. So I have four twos here. Um, so I'll be able to split that 80 up a little bit also. So then, as it simplifies, on the bottom I have a group of threes. So I can have just a three there. For the 80, I have those four twos. So there'll be a two there. And then I'm still going to have the five, and then the two threes are going to be left. So that would be 9 times 5 is 45 left. This next one's a little bit easier. The fifth root of 6 plus 5 fifth roots of 6. That's going to be 6 of them because they're the same root in there. And then this, oh boy, this 375 and the 81. Let's split them both up. Let's go 375. Let's start splitting that up. So that's going to be 5 times. Let's see, 5 goes in there 75 times. 75 would be 25 times 3. 25 would be 5 times 5. So this is the cubed root of 5 times 5 times 5 times 3. Plus 81 would be 27 times 3. 27 would be 3 times 9. And 9 would be 3 times 3. So I can rewrite this cubed root of 81 as 4 threes being multiplied. So remember, I'm looking for groups of th three things. So I have three fives. So that'll be a five on the outside with the cubed root of three. And I have three threes here. So that'll be plus 
3 cubed roots of 3. Add those together, 5 plus 3 is 8 cubed roots of 3. All right, now it's saying, okay, what if I don't have all those wonderful numbers? What if I've got variables in here? What am I going to do? And it's still the same thing. We're looking for groups of three. Now, don't forget that an exponent is a group of three. So as I'm looking at, um, at this, I'm looking at two things. And first, I'm looking at my number saying 125. I'm just going to write it out nice and big here. 125 is 5 times 5 times 5, so that's good. And then remember, exponents are how many y's you have. So I have actually have six y's. So that would be y to the y times y times y times y times y. I, I really don't recommend writing it out like that. But what's nice about doing that is now you can actually see how many you have. So I have three fives. I have three y's here, and I have three y's here. So I can actually completely cube root this. I forgot the cube there. Cube root of five times five times five is five. And then I have a y, and then I have another y. And so really, this is 5y squared. Now, there's a couple ways to go about this. I could have also looked at this as, remember, how we can rewrite using that exponent. Remember, that can go up to an exponent as 1 third. So if I have 125y to the 6th, and I'm taking it to the 1 third power, I can apply that 1 third there going, well, 5 times 5 times 5 is 25, so that's 5. And then y to the 6 to the 1 third, you multiply those. And so 6 times 1 third would be 6 thirds. And 6 thirds is 2. So that reduces down to 5y squared. So there's a couple ways of doing this. I could also look, let me change the color again. I could also look at saying, well, if I'm looking for the cubed root, if I can have exponents of 3, that's great. So 125 is 5 cubed y to the 6th, I can break down into y cubed and y cubed, because if you add 3 and 3, you get 6. And then, that's just like this, but instead of writing it out, I just have an exponent showing that there's three of them. So then I can cube root that, I can cube root that, I can cube root that. So let's see if we can work on these and become more comfortable with them. Um, so this is already, this next one on the right here, this is already to the exponent power, so I'm going to apply that exponent to all of them. So this will be 9 to the 1 half, which is 3. This would be u squared to the 1 half. So if I multiply that, 2 times 1 half is just 1. And then this will be v tenth to the 1 half. And 10 times 1 half is just 5. So there's my simplification, 3u v to the fifth. Again, this root here is like dividing by 4 on the exponents. So 4 divided by 4 is just 1, so it's x to the first. And 8 divided by 4 is 2, so that's y squared. And then we're done. This actually simplified out, simplified out very nicely. So on this next one, it's a little bit odd one. All right, so we have 6 over 2. Those are just new regular numbers. Those aren't exponents, so that's just a 3. And then I have my x, and then x to the 1 third. I'm going to subtract those, so it's x to the 2 thirds. And then I have y to the 1 half. And then I'm going to move that z up and z to the fifth. And there's really nothing else I can do, so I guess that's going to be my answer on that one. All right, remember now, I'm looking at this number here, and I'm saying, oh, I need five, groups of five, or five in a group. Now, five, I can't simplify that at all. A to the fifth will be good, because that's a group of five right there. B the ninth, although it's not a group of 5 itself, it has a group of 5 in there. And C the 13th also has a couple of groups of 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. I still have a 5. I have A to the 5th. Now B to the ninth, I can rewrite as B to the 5th and B to the 4th. I wanted the 5 because it's a 5th root. But then I also needed the 4 because it has to add up to 9. And then C, this will be C to the 5th, C to the 5th, and C to the 3rd. Now I wrote them with c to the 5th just because I wanted you to see the 5's, but if you're comfortable with it, you could just put c to the 10th knowing that when you take the 5th root, that's going to be 2 of them because you're dividing by 5 when you take the 5th root. It's up to you how you want to do that. Now I'm just going to, what I like to do is circle the things I can root. So I can take out this group of 5, and this group of 5, this group of 5, and this group of 5. So on the outside, I'm going to have a, 
Remember, you're taking the fifth root, which means you're dividing by five, so the fives cancel out. I'm going to have b, I'm going to have two c's, and then I still have the fifth root of five b to the fourth c cubed. Now c times c is c squared, so a, b, c squared, fifth root of five b to the fourth c cubed. This is a pretty complicated one, but I think you guys can get this. The thing is, it's going to take practice, so expect to have quite a bit of work to do on this. All right, so this will be an interesting one. Because it's the cubed root, remember I have to rationalize, but it's interesting because I have y to the third already on bottom, y to the third already on bottom, and then I have another y to the one to give me that seven. So, before I even rationalize, let's just simplify. I can take these ones out. But watch, look at where they are. They're on the bottom of the fraction, which means when you take them out, they need to be on the bottom of the fraction. So now I have x over y. I need two more y's to rationalize this, so I need to multiply by two more y's on top and bottom. And so now on the top, I'm going to have the cube root of xy squared. On bottom, I have that grouping that can come out, and it'll join those guys. And so now I have y cubed on bottom, because I already had two, and I added a third one after I rationalized. It's like never-ending here. Okay, so this one should be easy for us. Um, I see I have a square root of y and a square root of y. I have five of them here and six of them here, so really I have 11 of them. That wasn't too bad. This next one, if I look, I have x, and on the next one I have an x. I have y to the one-third and y to the one-third. So I can go ahead and just simplify. So it be negative 5xy to the one-third. It looks like our last problem is a fun one. So I'm noticing that I have cubed root on both of them. So let's go ahead and simplify what we can. We have 3 cubed root of 5. Now x to the fifth has a 3 in there, doesn't it? So I have x cubed and then x squared. Okay, so if I want to simplify that one, I can say, well, I can cube root that, and that comes out. So now I have 3x cubed root of 5x squared. All right, now if I go to the next one, I have x, the cubed root. Now 40, let's see here, 40 is going to be 4 times 10. 4 is 2 times 2. 10 is 2 times 5. So I'm going to group, have a group of 2's. So I have 2 cubed times 5. And then I have x squared, which I don't have any 3's in there. So I can cube root the 2. So when I take that out, it would be minus 2x, the cube root of 5x squared. Now here's some good things that happened in doing this. Okay, it's a cube root for both of them. They both have 5x squared inside, so this is good news. Also good news is they both have an x in front. So really what I'm saying is I have 3 of these minus 2 of these. So now I just have 1 of them, so it'll just be 1x cube root of 5x squared.